Get the f*** out of here! <laughs> Go home! We don't want you here. We don't like your kind here. We only like people in blue cars around here. One more. Don't honk at me. <laughs> don't honk at me, asshole. <laughs> the gate is open. Time to go through. Are you ready for what's on the other side? No. Nope. Oh, God dang it. So we were going to react to one thing. I'm just going to say it. Yeah, we tried to react to Mentally Mitch, and I'm sorry, but the high pitch voice thing... I'm sorry. It's not our speed. No, well, no, it 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 gives me flashbacks to Fred, and I don't like that. I I'm it. It's like the Vietnam flashbacks. I just all of a sudden start hearing that music in my head from Platoon, and it's just like hearing Fred screaming at the top of his lungs, you know, in that ultra high pitch. Well, I'm like, no, I can't do this. It's if Fred started a friggin' meme review channel. I, I, mm. And, More and, power to you if you yeah, like that kind of thing. If you enjoy it, cool. But it's not for us. Not for us, no. And people will just be like, okay, okay, boomer. It's like, whatever. I don't care. Say what you want. I'm old, Yusuke. You can't play high pitched noises in my ear. I'm yeah. tinnitus. <laughs> Went to too many metal concerts. Jesus. All right, so. The, instead, we're going to be doing some Casual Geographic. This one just popped up in our Discord. Why America's Most Hated Animal is Underrated. Is That's it deer? Like coyote. Is it deer? From one of its previous videos, it sounds like it was the coyote. Maybe. We'll see. But let's just go ahead and check it out. Here we go. <laughs> Jesus. What's the most underrated animal? See, now that's almost a trick question because of the very definition of underrated. Because if everyone agrees that this one thing is underrated, then, well, it's, it's not really underrated. not that underrated. It's just rated thing, at if that I ask point. You what animals overhated. Because again, if a majority of people can agree that one specific animal gets too much hate, then guess who suddenly isn't that overhated? And that applies to animals I can guarantee you've already thought of. Like, I'll bet at least one person ah. thought sharks. Well, actually, sharks ah. have gotten pretty good PR over yeah. the years. Mostly because we realize we murk hundreds of millions of them a year. That and dolphins started getting the smoke that was previously reserved for sharks. And believe it or not, gorillas used to get that same type of I smoke. I still give sharks Thanks plenty of smoke. Kong, there was a time where people saw our me. vegan bodybuilding cousins as violent, malicious hell spawns. Basically, what we know chimpanzees are, we thought gorillas were. It took a kid falling into a gorilla pen and, you know, not dying for public perception to change. I'm talking about Binti, by the way. Harambe, that's a, that's another story. But speaking of PR. Maybe nobody's has gotten more of a 180 than the wolf. An animal that was once so feared and loathed that people did everything in their power to keep wolves from breathing U.S. oxygen. Mm. It wasn't until we realized, one, we kind of need wolves, and two, wolves are actually terrified of people for us to change how we felt about them. So really, none of these animals can be called the most overhated. For an animal to be truly overhated, consequentially, most of you would have to dislike it enough to disagree that it gets too much hate in the first place. Which is why this isn't a shark, gorilla, or even a wolf video. But before I tell you what it is, we recently just passed the two-year anniversary of this channel that again pretty much started by accident. So in the spirit of change and new beginnings and all that... There's so much Whoa, fucking room. for real? <laughs> yeah, so for... I, he went full screen a while ago, but... We haven't seen as many videos with him, with him in widescreen. Yeah. And it's yeah. weird. <laughs> It's still weird to me seeing him in widescreen. Yeah, this is life now. Anyway, for an animal nice. to be truly overhated, <laughs> it's not enough for just people to have it out for them. And it's the fact that almost anything with a pulse is born instinctively hating coyotes that puts them here. If there's one thing you learn in this video, it's that no other animal gets treated more like nature's stepchild than the coyote. A red-haired middle child at that. <laughs> and while the human wolf arc has actually gone in a positive direction, people seem to hate their cousins as much if not more than they did 100 years ago. First, let's talk about what coyotes are. The key difference between a coyote and a wolf is that coyotes wear the face of someone who's seen everything life has to offer and was impressed by none of it. I've never seen an animal look so Yeah, the, that is the face of something that's just like, it's just like, go ahead, shoot me. So, at, uh, least, at least I won't have to think about life anymore. Real quick, can you double check just to make sure we haven't already seen this one? Because he may just be talking similarly to how he was talking about coyotes in a different video, but this seems familiar. Okay. Hold on, let's take a look, see. Just to double check real fast. Here we go. Hmm. 
Nope. Okay. We have not. Yeah, I think he's just talking similar to some things he said about him in another one. So, my bad. All right, we just had to make sure that we hadn't reacted to this before. Because, you know, we've reacted to over 7,000 videos, so, I mean, yeah. go figure. Several of them have been casual geographic, so. Yes. Uh, so I know he's don't. talked about coyotes in one of them that we've reacted to before, so. Yeah. Life. Well, except for this guy. Now, I once said that wolves are... But actually, I was... That, that was stupid of me to say because I've never seen him switch to full screen before. I would have realized that, so... Bizarre, <laughs> but better. That wasn't exactly true. Because while wolves usually outcompete coyotes and straight up bully them when they're in the same area code, coyotes make up ground by being way more adaptable. That's actually what helped turn the wolves' image around. Because the absence of wolves meant coyotes were able to run around unchecked and unhinged. And thanks to a diet that consists of literally anything that isn't nailed down. No, seriously, if it fits down a coyote's throat, they're going to eat it. Coyotes were able to succeed almost as well in the city as they did in the prairie. You can find a coyote in 49 states, and if there was a Hawaiian border, they'd probably go 50 for 50. Being able to make a meal plan out of almost <laughs> anything, while also being clever enough to avoid humans, is why coyotes, unlike Except wolves, were able one. to succeed yeah. in urban areas the way most predators couldn't. They're basically travel-sized wolves that identify as raccoons. Any given moment you stand on American soil, you're standing closer to a coyote than you might want to admit. For example, I've seen yeah, them. I never freaking see them. I've seen them. I've only ever seen one, and it was already smushed by a car. I've seen uh, I've seen uh, three of them at once. Uh, they were um, actually I've seen I've seen them multiple times. Three of them at once at my grandma's old place, um, and then there was another one uh, that I saw in the cow fields um, over uh, back on uh, old Jonesboro. Hmm. Saw them back there, and I was just like, "Is that a coyote?" <laughs> Yeah, it is. And it was like stalking the stalking the cattle and everything. I'm like, okay, I know how this ends. So, <laughs> and I just drove off. What with the coyote getting brained by a cow? <laughs> either that or either that or it attacks a calf and like tries to uh, like like take the calf. Um, that would be sad. Yeah. Well, every now and again, when I'm outside, I'll like hear a cow. Like mooing, like very loudly in the distance, and I'm just gonna be like, "Coyote got a calf." Like, that's what's in my head. Well, I always like assume that a cow is giving birth whenever I hear that. Maybe that, but in my head, I'm always thinking because of what I've seen. I'm just like, "Yep, coyote stole a calf." Now, this one is going raccoon mood right here. Oh yeah. Thirty thousand wily seasoned across New York, and chances are you have bar in Queens. It's almost like they all have NordVPN, because NordVPN creates a ah. data and protects your identity by hiding your IP address, allowing you to browse the internet in the shadows like a coyote in the city, and you get to enjoy your internet experience without having to worry about your data being sold on the black market or whatever they do with that. You have the option to connect to one of thousands of different servers across several different countries. If you ever want to watch Spongebob on Netflix but can't in your area, Australian servers are a hop, skip, and a button away, without the 18-hour plane ride or the toilet snakes. Also, with super fast servers, you never have to feel like you're compromising your speed for security. And thanks to NordVPN's threat protection, you can enjoy whatever you do on the internet, again, I, I don't judge, whatever that may be, without having to worry about ads, trackers, and malware. So to get the most out of your streaming service, make sure to go to nordvpn.com slash casual geographic to cop a huge discount available only for a limited time. A discount including an additional four months free off a two-year plan. And with NordVPN's money-back guarantee, it's basically risk-free. You want to know what isn't risk-free? Well, if you're a coyote, breathing. Threat protection would actually be a pretty huge buff to them because, long story short, anything that's in constant contact with a coyote is either taught or born hating them. You're probably familiar with the wolf-raven relationship. Here's how coyotes fit into that. So wolves have no love and no patience for coyotes, mostly because the latter will try to steal food from them right under their nose. Yeah. Which often gets the coyote put on a shirt on sight. <laughs> now ravens and coyotes often compete for the wolves' leftovers. But because ravens are also one of the smartest things in the world with wings, they'll often snitch on thieving coyotes over to their wolf backup. Why does because that why I stop raven there, have while purple sand on its beak? I think it's just the reflection from the snow. Often snitch Either on way, thieving coyotes. And it's like mystical looking. Coyotes over to the also the also it's got a flat top. 
Yeah. A wolf backup. And the because Ravens look stopped, fucking baller. Oftentimes, while the coyote is actively running for its life, the raven will fly right above it to show the wolves which direction to run in. It's really no different than a helicopter during a high-speed chase, and the result is often one less coyote to count on the census. Damn. And somehow having an airborne Black Air Force put a real-life hit a on you isn't where it ends for them. Never more. Believe it or not, the very symbol of our country is really just an overgrown, glorified seagull with the vocal cords of one. And as scavengers, that puts the alopecia pigeon often in direct competition with the wolf's understudy. Not only will bald eagles attempt to bully coyotes away from food, if you're lucky, you'll even see them snatch the food right out of the coyote. <laughs> God, that would be annoying. Something that the coyote's a pair of wings and a couple billion years of evolution away from doing. It doesn't stop there. Bears will often unsubscribe coyotes from life before they get the chance to finesse them for food. Oh, shit. Cougars do the exact same, except unlike bears, they'll often go out of their way to eat the coyote. Once in a while, a coyote will make the mistake of stopping for a drink, only to get game over by a gator. Even raccoons find a way to get their licks in, as mobs of raccoons have been known to attack and jump single lone coyotes. That's why it's never a good idea to beef with something born with its own ski mask. Donkeys come into the world with a raging hate bone for anything that even looks coyote in the face. Which is why not only will donkeys unregister coyotes from life, they'll also thrash and ragdoll the coyote's soul divorce corpse like a toy. This dog discrimination even Damn. applies to the big bird of South America. Like the donkey, the Rhea has an internal prejudice for the entire canine family, and that extends to coyotes. Coyotes aren't usually found in South America, meaning coyotes manage to succeed in being hated by an animal that hasn't even met them yet. And as for humans, That's awesome. Well, like I said, Americans hate coyotes more than the metric system. You don't have to see a coyote, you don't even have to live near one. All you have to be is a kid with cable on a Saturday morning to watch a coyote get curb stomped by life. Oh, yeah, coyote, Wiley Coyote and the Roadrunner. Wiley really spent 70 years getting nated on by a bird that really should have been light work in the first place. <laughs> like, if it wasn't for one animal, coyotes would really be out here with no friends. Coyotes and badgers are nature's unlikely duo. Unlikely, since badgers should probably hate coyotes just as much as everyone else, since coyotes have a history of sometimes attacking and eating badgers. With badgers being a possible threat to coyote pups, the feelings should be mutual. But they manage to put all that aside when they hunt together. Since badgers can dig faster than any mammal, including a grown man with a shovel, they're able to flush out animals like ground squirrels and prairie dogs out of their burrows. Trying to hightail it on land puts them on schedule to get run down by the wily coyote. The coyote badger team up is so OP that they're actually three times more successful when they go out on hunts together. <laughs> Everyone wins, they, except the squirrels. Yeah. But like wolves and ravens, this is Except the ones a getting eaten. Exactly. It's a relationship. Scientists have seen coyotes and badgers playing with each other and resting together even when food wasn't involved. Coyotes have been seen laying with their badger friends and licking them while the badgers would tolerate it. And if you know about badgers, tolerance is their love language. And it makes sense since coyotes and badgers apparently go way back. Way back as in researchers found a Mexican jar believed to be from the 1300s that showed a drawing of the two animals together. It's one of the truly wholesome friendships in nature, just like Kevin and his rock. Also, I've shown this clip like a thousand times, but I never mentioned that that's actually the coyote's play bow. It's usually something you'll only see them do with other coyotes, but occasionally you'll see them do it with other animals. Either way, that's what it looks like when an extrovert adopts an introvert. That's kind of where the positivity ends. Because like I said, coyotes are the true plumbers of nature. They have to take every for a living. And the coyote carnage peeks out at us. Look, you could probably tell that I have a soft spot for coyotes, but I'm also self-aware enough to realize that if I had a cat or a small dog in coyote country, my feelings would probably be different. The the most metal one I can think, metal story about like a bunch of coyotes I can think of is the one Joe Rogan told on his podcast. It's about this guy, his uh like his uh, pit bull uh, showed up on his doorstep like after be staying outside all night, and the dog was like his pit bull was like torn up like just had like scratch marks and bite marks and just like was just like from head to toe like part of its ear was missing and it was just it was just bad and you know he took the dog in like not knowing what the hell happened and took the dog into the vet's office and the vet looked at it and uh and the vet was like we're gonna have to keep him overnight but you know uh, we're not like we're not sure what could have caused this uh, and then the guy goes home and he follows the trail of blood uh, that his pit bull left and it goes behind his his shed and back behind that shed was six dead coyotes like I that remember you told me that about that recently yeah that pit bull did some work homie that pit bull did work handling sit you know taking out six coyotes like that that's doing work I actually forget pets. If I had a sleep schedule worth defending and I lived near this. 
<laughs> All right, I'm getting out my thirty thirty, and I'm ending this right now. It's like, I, I, ooh, if I if I had to listen to that, nah, I ain't having that. <laughs> oh. Yeah, oh. Jaguar is like, oh, shut the hell up. Shut up. Pets, a lot of people hate coyotes because they see them as an EDP level threat to children. Not only that, but if you're a farmer and don't oh. have coyote insurance, I have to assume you also sleep with your life savings under your mattress like Mr. Krabs. Also, it probably <laughs> doesn't help that they're the reason why Spider-Man doesn't have to be involved for Uncle Ben to still catch the wrong end of a fade. But you want to know where a lot of the coyote hate came from? Seriously, you'll never guess it. Not with a thousand tries. Oh, Mark, Mark Twain. Twain. I don't know what kind of childhood he had, but something clearly happened to make him hate coyotes as if one took his mother. Mark Twain in 1872 described coyotes as sorry looking skeletons with gray wolf skin stretched over it, with a tail that forever sags with a despairing expression of misery. Mans really used his understanding of the English language to dunk on a lower mammal. He even called coyotes so disgusting that even fleas would dub them. He called it a lowly coward with teeth so jacked up that the rest of its face is constantly apologizing for it. One of the biggest Damn. mysteries in nature is what one coyote had to do to make Mark Twain invest so much time and malice slandering them. Like I've never seen a human being so personally offended by the existence of an animal. And if Twain was around today, he'd probably post an exposed video about them. And that would be after canceling them on Twitter. But his coyote Damn. hit piece got so much clout that it actually played a big part in the reason a lot of people wanted them evicted. From the prairie, from America, from life itself, we basically declared war on an actual prairie dog. Except there was just one issue with this. Coyotes are canine cockroaches. They refuse to be killed. Seriously, it's impossible, and we've tried. Like, Australia gets a lot of grief for losing a war with a great value ostrich, but we've been getting got by a dollar store dingo for the longest. But somehow, getting their lunch money taken by wolves constantly for generations taught the coyotes how to cope. In areas where coyotes are heavily hunted, no. they'll just have more coyotes. Usually, coyotes come out by the half dozen, but in areas where hunters have the green light, they can have litters of up to 12. Coyotes even have a specific roll call for this exact reason. A female coyote will call out as a way to see how many coyotes are in the area. It's like their version of a verbal census. Well, if the female doesn't hear a lot of coyotes in response, that'll trigger something in her body to produce more pups. In one case in Utah, a rancher turned a female coyote into a widow. What did she do? Well, she left the area, found a male, brought him back, and continued making more coyotes. When it comes to coyotes, <laughs> understand that one minus one equals one. The harder we try to burp them, the harder they work to birth them. And no matter how much everything in nature wants them dead, coyotes will still be out here like, You can't get rid of We hate the things we can't control. That's why coyotes get no love. And that's where coyotes get their get back on wolves. Because where wolves will often outcompete them in the same area, coyotes are that much more adaptable. And as much as people like to say they hate them, we're actually the biggest reasons why coyotes were able to take their act across every state that isn't an island. When we wiped out wolves to the point where we had to physically bring them back, coyotes took the opportunity to turn the United States into its playground. And like the canine cockroaches they are, they were able to survive and thrive in urban environments. Mostly because, like I said, they will eat literally anything. You can have a garden with apples, pears, and peaches and still suffer coyote casualties. You can leave cat food out for your pet, not realizing you're contributing to a coyote's calories. And as are the rules in nature, when you can eat anything, you can live anywhere. Especially because of another fact. Wolves often rely on pack structure to survive. It's the reason why you'll almost never see a healthy adult wolf in the wild by itself. Coyotes can run through life solo or in pairs, making it that much easier for them to fly under the radar. Speaking of pairs, coyotes are monogamous. They very much mate for life. As in a coyote will find another coyote and decide mm. that's its life now. Mother and father coyote will even go grocery shopping together because that increases their hunting success rate. And here's where they might just win you over. So a lot of their meal prep involves stealing from much bigger, much more dangerous animals like bears or wolves. So oftentimes it's actually the male coyote that'll go and scope out a possible bounty while the female waits off in the distance. If worse comes to worse and the male coyote gets relieved from life, the female coyote still has a chance to get away. And even though his kids have less of a chance of surviving without their father, it's better than the 0% it would have been if both parents got packed up. But the best dog father out there would probably be the golden jackal. While they're not the same, let's be honest, coyotes and jackals are like the metric system and whatever Americans use. Imperial. If you call yourself an American, you probably call it a coyote. If you live literally anywhere else, it's probably a jackal. Coyotes and jackals pretty much have the same roles in society. And just like coyotes, golden jackals mate for life and the male will dig a den for his pregnant female, which he will defend with his life. Golden Jackal couples also hunt together and they're three times more successful when they do. The father Jackal's so devoted that if something ever happened to him, chances are his kids wouldn't pull through with just a single mother working alone. Coyotes are just as ride or die. Not only are they loyal partners, but female coyotes that don't have kids of their own during pupping season will often help their sisters or mothers raise their children. 
Coyote aunties are very much a thing, and it means a world of a difference to the coyote pups. Speaking of kids, we gotta address the elephant in the room, and that elephant would be the koi wolf. It's exactly what it sounds like. You ever hear the expression, F the ops? Yeah, wolves took that at its word. And like almost everything else, this one's on us too. Cause while we were out here murking wolves like they owed us oil, the ones that did survive were low on options. And I guess if you squint hard enough at a coyote, it starts to look like a wolf. I like how out of context mm. that sounded deep. Yeah. <laughs> deep and profound, but really, we're just talking about coyotes and wolves coitusing. To the point where the Northeastern Coyote is actually a hybrid that's 60% Western Coyote, 30% Eastern Wolf, and about 10% domestic dog, which I can't fully explain. The problem is, Koi Wolves are bigger than the typical Western Coyote, while also not being as people shy as the typical Wolf. One thing about Coyotes, damn it, they're gonna find a way. But the question is, do Coyotes deserve the hate? Again, your answer may depend on if you've ever had a pet that got turned into Coyote poop. But in their defense, because honestly, someone has to, Coyotes don't usually see dogs as prey, usually just competition. And as afraid of them as some people are, coyotes have been responsible for human obituaries twice, ever. Once in California, once in Canada. Squirrels and deer empty way more seats at family reunions, yet no one's out here declaring war on them. True. Also, there's a lot of myths surrounding coyotes. Squirrels? Yep. Yeah. How do squirrels kill people? Swerving, avoid them in their cars. Oh, yeah. But they'll actively bait dogs into chasing them so they can lead the dog into a pack of coyotes waiting to tear it apart. It's not Well, it seems like if you were to count that, the same thing should happen sometimes with coyotes. I guess, but I, I don't know. Coyotes probably are good about getting out of the road. Like, they're yes. probably a lot more jumpy. Like, then, like, because deer... The reason why, like, the shot, it's like the shock of something coming at them on the road is why they just stand still. Same thing yeah. with squirrels. Whereas I guarantee you, coyotes just have that natural reflex to just bolt. And squirrels will just straight up run out and fright your car, too. Oh, absolutely. Coyotes might be smarter and, like, hear something big and loud coming and stay away from where it's coming, you know? Mm-hmm. And a lot like with wolves, coyotes are naturally afraid of people. It's when they start associating people with food that things can get bitey. Now, if you ask me how I feel about farmers flatlining coyotes to protect their livestock, I, I mean, what do you want them to do? I, like, I get it. Not to sound all PETA in the face about it, there's humane ways to do it. I literally watched a video of a guy setting his pit bull loose on a coyote and watching it slowly break its leg while the coyote cried in pain and the owner was just recording. And that's where I'm like, Damn, reincarnation really something, because Twain's still out here leaving his mark. I'm not asking you to like coyotes. I'm just saying anything with that much of a will to live at that little of a fire under a cautious kangaroo to give about anyone else. I mean, it, it, at some point, you gotta respect the game. Their entire existence is out of spite and a middle finger to everyone else. I mean, man survived 70 Basically. years of disrespect and a second space jam. That, that's gotta count for something. <laughs> but anyway, that's gonna do it for this video, which you can probably tell I had a lot of fun with. For more consistent content, be sure to follow my TikTok and Instagram. I try to post daily on both. And if you would like to support this channel, my Patreon's also gonna be in the description. Final plug, but most important, as you may or may not know, I actually came out with a book earlier this summer, along with an audiobook on the off chance you're not sick of hearing my voice yet. The book's called 100 Animals That Can Effing End You, and I think the title kind of speaks for itself. The link's also going to be in the description. Other than that, drink water. For real, that stuff's important. Hug your mother. She's not going to be here forever. Respect coyotes, I guess. Thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring this video, and I'll hopefully see y'all in the next one. And grenade. Now that they switched the... They're just puppies. <laughs> I know, I'm, not, I'm just joking. But uh, now that he's switched to widescreen, I wonder if he's ever gonna get tired of holding that microphone <laughs> like, for the whole video. Maybe, I don't get know. himself a mic stand or something. Or get himself one of the wireless road mics. Mm -hmm. You know, like the wireless little square ones that he's, he can literally just carry around like this all the time. I don't know. But yeah. Anyway, that's uh, America. America's most hated animal is underrated. Yeah, I could see that. But, alright. Anyway, I guess that's going to do it. So, check out more from Casual Geographic by clicking uh, M and Die in the, uh, or M and Die 97 in the uh, title of the video. And until next time, I'm Nate. I'm Nick. Y'all be good people. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.